Will Pokemon card prices return back to their original price tag? That occurred sometime early last year before the huge increase of the prices that just happened in the snap of your thumb. Now, a lot of us are happy, some are sad, but you know, the market keeps moving because that's the way it is, guys. So let's just talk more about this, whether this is actually a possible future prediction of the Pokemon card prices down the track. What is happening everyone? My name is Mystic Fluffy. In this video, I'll be talking about whether Pokemon card prices will fall back to their original prices prior to the huge boom in the prices that happened overnight that was unexpected that a lot of us didn't expect to see. I mean, it didn't just happen in the Pokemon TCG, it happened in uh, Dragon Ball Z, uh, happened in other collectibles, especially sports, sport cards like basketball cards and all that. So it was, it was just... It was surprising to see that a lot of people saw a huge upturn in these prices and then there's probably a lot of people who are holding on to these and just sold them at, at the right time for a good profit margin. But <clears throat> I remember I saw a Clefairy, Lily Clefairy Dream League card, PSA 10, selling for $60 USD like back, back last year, early last year and then I just looked at the eBay sold listings recently. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised that it's actually sitting at about a $500-$500 yeah, USD price and that's almost like 10 times for what you could have got it for a year ago, which is a huge increase. Like if people knew that then people would just buy it up and all that, so that's the smart investment side of things. But the market, it is the market, you can't really control it, you can only just accept where the market sits, like whether you try to sell uh, at a low point or buy at a high point that's just where the market is like there's no real like guarantee of where it will be in the future like the market will just go up it'll go down go up go down it'll be, it's kind of like stocks you can you can never really predict it 100 but you just follow it <clears throat> you can actually time the market and what really sets the prices up though guys i feel like it's uh, really the influencers or the guys who, who have money to spare, people that, that earn like over $100,000 plus a year are able to buy high-end cards. So if, say like Logan Paul, he was able to buy the first edition Charizard PSA 10 for like $150,000 and that kind of sets the, the tone of where, where, the, where if you were to sell another PSA 10 Shadowless first edition Charizard, that's kind of like the standard, maybe it can be a bit lower, but that's kind of where people see the baseline of whatever a card sells for online. Because word spreads. Like the like Logan Paul, he sold his, he bought a first edition uh, booster box for like just under two hundred thousand dollars, and then down the track, someone else bought it for higher, and then he, you know, he bought some for like three hundred thousand dollars, and then there's been other transactions where it's been about three hundred thousand dollars for a first edition base set booster box sealed. So the price is just, I don't know how far these can go because uh, at the end of the day, it's really the really the high-end collectors or people that really have money can afford these high-end products, whether it's seal, whether it's slabs or whether it's a raw card. So it really leaves like the majority of the community in the hobby to miss out on these purchases because I feel like even whenever the like, high-end cards go down, like people will jump jump on it and buy it but even though it's not the lowest they'll buy it at a certain price they say the first edition Charizard drops to like seventy thousand dollars you know and then someone like PSA 10 so someone will jump on it at seventy thousand dollars so someone buys it at seventy thousand dollars and that kind of sets the, the the baseline or the standard of what how how much you can sell your Charizard PSA 10 for Alright, excuse me guys. A few moments later. Alrighty guys, so I do apologize for that. So where was I? Right. So Pokemon card prices is really dependent on whatever the last recent sold listings are. People use eBay, people use Troll and Toe, but the gold standard is eBay sold listings, so maybe they'll look at the last three sales on there and then they'll base their if they were to sell something they're based on the, the average of the three last three sold listings of that certain product so that's how it is at the moment but in the end it's the community is there's a larger community of like normal people who work uh, day jobs there's like very few there's probably a small percentage of people 
probably more than we think, but there is a small percentage of people who are high-end high collectors who have money to buy these expensive products. So that's where it stands. I mean, you never see, I don't think you ever see a first edition booster box uh, go back to like $500, which was back in like 2007 is what it was sold for. Back in that was like the average price. And <clears throat> you would never see that those prices again, because if they even drop to like $100,000, for a booster box, it would get snatched up. Like someone can afford it. So that's where I, what I think. But you, I think at the at this point in time, you see prices uh, dip a bit, and even when they dip a bit, it won't be much. It won't be like a huge percent. It wouldn't be like fifty percent. Maybe it'd be like five percent, perhaps maybe ten percent. I don't think it'll be any more than twenty percent. Like twenty percent, I think. You, you won't, I don't think it'll go any lower than twenty percent, but. Uh, it, it might if uh, no one's really paying attention to it. So it's really about what where the tension is at the at the moment. I mean, there's a lot of people that who collect because it's you know you gotta realize that Pokemon has had a long history. So there's been people who've been collecting for 25 years, and there's different eras. You know, you got you know Watsy, you got the Neo set, uh, you got the e, e series, you got EX series, you got Black and White. Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver, you got um, Diamond and Pearl, XY, Sun and Moon, Sword and Shield. So, you know, and then in each set, it really connects with people from, from different uh, eras. So some people might feel more connected or might enjoy more in certain sets. So some people might prefer the Sword and Shield or some people might love Sun and Moon the most. So they might invest more in that. And then, you know, there's probably a community in, in each some of this some of the expansion sets as well, but it's really what what you what you what you really cl collect. But yeah, I don't I don't really see the prices really dropping heaps. I don't think they'll ever go back to their original prices. Uh, if anything, they'll just drop a bit, like maybe ten percent, fifteen percent, and then people buy it, and then they'll pick up again to another twenty percent, thirty percent. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see how far these prices can actually go up. I don't think it will go down by much, but I think there's more of an exponential uptrend than a downtrend on these Pokemon products, considering that it's a collectible, and then collectibles really hold value as well, especially if there's limited quantity on certain uh, population reports on like PSAs or BGS or CGC that's taking a huge turnaround. Uh, but that's where it stands at the moment. So, you know, the market, the market is the market. You, you can't fault it. It is what it is. Like there's people who collect it for fun. There are people that collect it who use it as an investment side. And there are high-end collectors. There's influencers that, that push the market up because they've got the money and then maybe they want to, you know, have some fun, enjoy, see where it takes off. And then, you know, it's nice to know that your cards actually hold value and that yeah, even though if you bought it a month ago, a year ago, or two years ago, it's it's even if it's for a collection piece, it's nice to know that your card is actually worth more than when you bought it initially, and that you know that it's 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 going up, it's going up, and then you see times where it just drops a bit, but it's still higher than what you paid for, you know, especially the vintage cards because you know they're not going to print them anymore, so there's a limited supply in them, and people want to you know grow their collection as well, but. Yeah, I'm more, I'm more fascinated about where, where how high these prices can actually go. Like end of this year, will we we'll see first edition booster boxes go higher than three hundred thousand dollars or four hundred thousand dollars? So can will it actually hit a million dollars? I don't think it will, but there's a potential chance that it may. And yeah, it's it's enjoyable this hobby. You don't know where it take where it can take off, and then certain cards will be a huge hit. And you know, Pokemon's releasing pretty cool sets at the moment. And I'm pretty excited for the Chilling Rain set, but that's just me. Anyways, guys, uh, let me know in the comments below of what you think of the Pokemon prices. Do you think they'll drop back to what they were originally? Let me know in the comments below with your prediction of this, whether it just continue, continually just go up. And uh, anyways, guys, so that's my time. And as always, keep safe, stay out of trouble, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm <laughs> sorry.